I didn't record hooking up this midnight solar surge protector. Um, here's the paperwork on it. The surge protective device. I don't think it gives me a model number, but it's a 300 volt. Use our fingers to grab it. The one I have is the 300 volt right here. MN Midnight Solar Surge Protecting Device 300 AC and DC so you can hook it up to AC or DC if you have solar that's how much everything it covers so that's the device I have the AC one because I have grid power and I hooked it up into this figuration just tube coming in the double pole breaker two hots and then the ground going over to a ground bar if you don't have an empty breaker, you can actually tie it into like a AC unit, hot water tank, or something like that that's at the top of your breaker panel. It has to be at the top. So just think of water falling down here and you have a filter at the top to filter all the water coming down. That's what this does. It filters the electricity coming down through all your other breakers. So any surges or electric strikes, it goes through this before it gets to all your other breakers in your house. Hopefully that makes sense. But here it is. And I got it fed into these two. These are my lines. You gotta be careful because this breaker panel is not off. I do have it on right now. But these are just my wires, circuit transformers feeding this little voltmeter here, current meter. Let me know how much current I pull in from the grid or from the AC pole outside. That way I know how much AEP is charging me. And those ones over there are from my generator back feed, which are right here. But this is a 40 amp breaker I installed. Got the two hots coming out. You don't want to have like a 90 degree bend because electricity doesn't like to take turns. It's So I'm hoping that little bend doesn't, little S curve don't affect me. If it does or have any issues, I might shorten that up, try to make it like a straight run. Then the ground wire is right, right there, that green wire back in the back here, little green wire back here. Right back here, the green wire, that goes to the ground. That's the first thing I did. Then I hooked up the two hots, then I slid the breaker in, but I had to loosen up this little bolt here to take this plate off right here to feed my back generator. 30 amp, it's off of course because I'm not generator. If I had the panel on, you can see there's a steel plate there. This plate slides up, that way the breaker can't be turned back on the main breaker, then I can slide my generator breaker over. And this drops, then I can't slide the generator on because it hits that metal plate. Then I can turn the main breaker back on. So that thing, oh, well, you can't really see. There's the main feed. So that plate kind of sits right here, so you can't slide this breaker over. Then you can't slide the plate up because it hits this main 200 amp feed right here. So you slide that breaker off, then the plate slides up. Then you can slide this breaker on. Then when that plate's up and this breaker's on, you can't turn the main on because it hits the metal plate. So you have to slide this breaker off so the plate drops, then you can turn the main on. That way you don't back feed the main line and electrocute a lineman. Just a little safety feature.